another episode of Reviews by This Guy. And before we get into this box that we have on the table, which is the topic of today, I'd like to say don't forget to let me spend my money so you don't waste yours by hitting that subscribe button. And if you're interested in keeping informed of new videos such as this one, to hit the We Theme channel, don't forget to click that bell. And as you can see here, we have the Hyper, I'll slide it down, X Quadcast. And before we start, babbling about this guy I'd like to say this is not a full-on review I am NOT an expert by any means this is just my opinion this is actually the first mic I've actually ever owned technically so it'll just be my opinion on the overall design the functions what I don't like about it why I bought it but before we get into all that I'd like to just read a little of what's on HyperX this website, the HyperX Quadcast, is the ideal all exclusive standalone microphone for the aspiring streamer or podcaster looking for a condenser mic with quality sound. Let's get into the features of this mic because that sounds extremely appealing. And those features are anti vibration shock mount. At some point, I'm gonna have to get one of those X boom arms for this. And uh, I'm not entirely sure which one I'm gonna choose or where I'm gonna go to get that. I don't know if HyperX sells one, but a tap to mute sensor with lead indicator. It has four selectable polar patterns. And those patterns are, it says, choose between four polar patterns, stereo, omnidirectional, cardioid, I don't even know if I pronounced that right, and bi-directional to optimize your broadcast setup and keep the focus of the sound you want to be heard. Obviously, I'm gonna have to really mess with this thing and look up tutorials just so I could get the best quality sound because right now I'm still currently using, which I believe is a HyperX gaming headset. And yes, it is. It's a HyperX gaming headset that I've been using to record sound. And now I also have an adapter over here. I probably can't get it in the screen. Uh, I bought that on Amazon because it technically wasn't recording correctly through my cell phone. It had to split both the audio, I mean the headset and the microphone. None of that babbling anymore. It has a mount adapter included, convenient gain control adjustment, internal pop filter, which I guess it filters out all the pops and cracks, built-in headphone jack, and multi-device and chat program capability. Let's go ahead and get this guy open or take a look at the box first. It's a really appealing but simple box. On the side here it says, what does that say? We're all gamers. Uh, yeah, that's probably not true. Top HyperX, it has all the features right here. It says it's compatible with the PC, PS4 Pro, and Mac. I'm probably going to be using this more for recording video, whether it be through my cell phone or capturing video on my PC, than gaming. And as you can see, you have all the key features here on the back. Let's get this guy open and let's actually take a look at this. All right, while I get this open, I forgot to discuss price. I paid a little more than I really wanted to. I believe the price for this, the normal price, look, I forgot. The normal price for this is $139.99 and I had seen it on HyperX's website and I should have bought it right away because I waited a couple days or a week and then it was sold out and I wanted one. These things are going for $200, uh, maybe even a little more than $200 on eBay and Amazon. I've seen some for $189. I finally got it, I think, on Macari which there will be a link to Macari down below. I like it a whole lot better than eBay. I got it for 160 something plus $10 shipping, so it was 170 something. I'm gonna be pretty upset when HyperX gets it back on their website, but I needed it right now, so I paid the extra 30 bucks. All right, in here we have HyperX has you covered. Got issues with HyperX's product? Contact, yeah, yeah. And just here's a little pamphlet of their stuff. I have a HyperX. I always forget what the name of the headset is. I'll throw that up on the screen, the headset. And I like it. I mean, it's not the best one that they have. And the audio suffers a little bit for that, but it's pretty decent. And here, I guess, is just the quick start guide. 
and it comes encased in this really hard foam and here is the headset I mean the mic itself doesn't seem like there is much in the box nope nothing under there and here is the mic comes with this I guess this is an adjuster knob so this is exactly why I have to read but it also has a fairly lengthy USB cable I don't know when this HyperX quadcast came out but they're they're using a mini USB cable to power this guy but gee that's the mount adapter I'm assuming this adapter is so you can mount it on the the uh, boom stand or arm whatever you want to call it. Uh, the mic itself, at first glance, this is the whole reason why I bought it, was just the design alone. I think it's really nice. I like the way it looks. Uh, the base itself is made of a metal, and you have rubber feet on the bottom here. The rest of it, however, is made of a plastic. The button that on top is a rubber, and these are some pretty sturdy strings here. The overall design, I think, is really nice i can't wait to get this powered on and see what it looks like the only thing is is i'm pretty sure i'm not going to be able to connect this to my cell phone so this is mainly going to be for recording on pc so i guess i'm still going to be using my HyperX headset to record audio through my phone i guess at some point i'm going to have to shell out the money for what is it a road mic because there is no port or anything on here for hooking up this mic to an external source there's no mic jack pretty much maybe you can hook this to a camera somehow via usb there might be some sort of adapter or something and as you can see i got it hooked up to my laptop and that's it lighting up honestly it looks extremely cool and i guess these are the four settings that it was talking about here I'm gonna have to look into this further, but either way, that was the stereo. I'm assuming it goes from this side to this side with the stereo, omnidirection, cardioid, which I'm, I know I am pronouncing that completely wrong. Cardioid, God, I'm butchering that. And you got your bio-directional, which is here. I'm assuming it goes that way. Obviously, there's two different sides, so that would make sense as to it being called bio-directional. And you also on the bottom, I'm gonna state that that's probably your volume. That's your gain control knob. But the purpose of a gain control is to tune the amp's input stage to accept the head unit's voltage level. Think about it like a cell phone conversation. Your job is to listen to the person on the other end. With the phone turned down to low, you can hear the other person over the background noise around you. Apparently some devices have automatic gain control, which is a closed loop feedback regulation circuit in an amplifier or chain of amplifiers, the purpose of which is to maintain a suitable signal amplitude at its output despite variation of the signal's amplitude at the input. I'm definitely gonna have to look into that more something that would be kind of cool to research and actually understand either way we're gonna get into testing some audio i'm gonna test i'm gonna record audio through the HyperX gaming headset which is what i'm using now and then i'm gonna record audio through this just to see the difference just to see if my 170 something dollars was well worth the money so i can get better audio when i'm screen capturing stuff and adding it into my video I'm also going to research and see if there's a way that this particular mic can hook up to my cell phone and record audio. As of now, looking at the inputs, I don't think that that's possible and I'm going to have to, like I said, get a good mic again. But let's get into that because I am babbling once again. Babble, babble, babble. All right, we're on the HyperX Quadcast. And we're on my Motile laptop, which you haven't seen the review on that. There are two videos. I'm going to show you the second one, which will be up at the top of the screen. Go ahead, check that out. It's a pretty good, affordable gaming laptop. Either way, back to the HyperX Quadcast. I'm going to go through some of the settings on the mic, see how the sound quality is, and then we're going to compare it to what I've been using, which is the HyperX Sting 
or Cloud Stinger gaming headset, which obviously the uh, audio quality on that hasn't been the greatest. All right, and the first setting we're going to go on is going to be stereo, and then we're going to go up and down the game control and see what the difference in sound quality is. Right now, as far as stereo is concerned, and I did a little research, I know I was a little, I wouldn't say confused, but lacking knowledge on the different features on this mic before. But stereo, obviously, is going to be your left and your right, and that's where the sound is going to be picking up on. Let's go through, actually, we'll save the gain for later when I get to a different setting, which apparently is the best setting on this mic, which I thought I was pronouncing wrong the whole time, which was cardioid, and I wasn't. Let's go to the next setting, which is Omni, and apparently Omni setting picks up sound all around the mic in a 360 degree. I can be over here, be in the back, and I can be on the side, and the sound is still picking up. So we can probably go through the gain here, but we're not going to. Let's go to the third setting. And now this is cardioid, and apparently this picks up sound in an upside down squished heart shape so you're going to be picking up sound in the front the left the right and kind of in the middle of the mic that's where the sound stops but either way let's go through the gain setting on this right now i am on the first setting although this goes all the way to the end let's start from all the way to the bottom and that's all the way to the right and here is all the way to the right, which I'm probably really low currently. Let's go ahead and move to the first dot, the first dot on the right. And now we're going to move to the second dot. This is the third dot. You guys be the judge on what sounds better. I'll have to listen to the recording later on. And here is your fourth, fourth, your fourth to last dot and here is your last dot on the left but it goes even further although I don't think the sound quality changes as much and here it is all the way to the left we're gonna go ahead and put that back on the first dot to the left let's change to your last pattern and that is bi-directional and apparently that is the opposite of what stereo sound is, and that is from your front of the mic. And now I'm on the side, and we're in the back, and that is where the bi-directional sounds, front and back. Let's go back to cardioid. Well, those are your different settings on the mic. You also have the mute button on the top, which... See, you didn't hear me. All you do is touch. It's touch sensitive at the top, and it will mute the mic out. Let's move on to the HyperX Cloud Stinger headset and see how that sounds in comparison. All right, we're now recording with what I believe is the HyperX Cloud Stinger headset. This is about the price point that this headset cost. Uh, my girlfriend bought it for me, I believe, for Christmas. It's meant for gaming and you know streaming and obviously the audio quality on it isn't the greatest for certain applications I mean it wasn't really meant for me to stick this in my video camera and well cell phone and record audio that way but it's all I've had so far and it hasn't been overly too bad except for when I try to go record on my PC during screen capture and then the sound is kind of tinny but compared to the HyperX quadcast I mean it's night and day obviously the sound quality on that is better there's a lot of different options for this headset you're mainly just getting stereo sound through the boom mic that's hooked up onto the headset itself it's done the job but not very well and you guys be the judge as to where the quality differs but this is the HyperX Cloud Stinger. All right, guys, what is my final thoughts? Well, they're really good. I'm really excited to have this mic in my arsenal for video recording and streaming. 
it was definitely a good purchase. I'm not entirely happy about spending almost 180 bucks on it when it went for 140 retail, but I guess them's the breaks when you wait too long and things get sold out. Overall, I love the metal construction of the mic. At first, I thought that the top part might have been plastic, but it does now touching it more. It feels like this is aluminum as well. Uh, something I forgot, well I didn't really forget to mention, I touched on it, I didn't really know what this was called, but that is the shock mount, and it's to help limit some of the micro vibrations that might come out your hard drive or from your desk or anything. I do like the included uh, mute button on the top, it is touch sensitive, you just touch it lightly, the light goes off to indicate that the mic is muted. That is a cool feature just in case you're playing a game and you want to mute all the sounds around you and just have the sound of the game. Uh, it does have a ton of settings which is something different than the mic I'm currently using, the headset, the Cloud Stinger to record a video. That was only one setting, that's what you got. This has different settings, I think that the best setting is, which I originally thought maybe it was stereo but I was wrong, the cardioid which I thought I was saying wrong which is right, is possibly the better setting. There is four of them like you've seen in the video and I'm not entirely sure what different scenarios you would probably want to use each of those settings. But for now it's going to be cardioid for me and on the bottom I love the included gain setting which obviously did not get with the gaming headset but once again that headset was not meant for video production. The only thing that I have a problem with here on the gain is that I wish they would have just spread the dots out more just for aesthetics. It would have been nice if the dots were spread out because this goes beyond the dots here and then as you can see it goes beyond the dots here which is the lowest setting. I guess they just wanted to include dots for the mid-range of the sound that this mic can pick up but I think that right here is probably where I'm gonna be at although right here sounds pretty good as well in the mid either way nice that they included it and at some point I'm probably gonna have to get a boom arm and it was nice that they included the adapter for this to go on a boom arm but it would have been nice if they actually sold a complete set with the mic and the boom arm itself uh, the included braided cable USB cable is nice and it is mini USB so that's kind of weird I don't know why they didn't go with like micro or C I don't know when this mic actually came out I also wish they would have included an adapter some adapter that would allow me to use this mic during video recording on my cell phone or when I get a camera in the future they did not I did remember a while back I did a video on emulation on Android via an OTG cable and that's what this is. Unfortunately I can't test it to see if it'll work because this is micro USB instead of C which is what my cell phone is. I do have adapters for that laying around. Of course I can't find them now that I need them but if I do happen to find it I am going to test it before editing this video. If I don't find it before I finish editing this video, I'll leave it on my Twitter. Uh, you can go ahead and follow me at Weedeam Channel and you can find out whether that OTG cable worked and this will record through your camera. Overall, I'm really fond of it. I think it was a great purchase. I think that this HyperX Quadcast is going to be a great addition to the Weedeam arsenal and there is going to be better audio in the future. If you guys have any questions about this mic or you think that there is a better mic out there within the price point that I paid, not just the $140 that this thing actually cost, but the $180 that I paid on eBay or was it, it was Macari, please leave those in the comments down below. If you liked what was contained in this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. If you thought this video sucked as always, and it wasn't actually a review and I left things out, even though in the beginning I said this was mainly my opinion with some review elements, you can go ahead and hit that thumbs down. If you found the video to be of value, please go ahead and share amongst friends and the rest of your social media. And as always, don't forget to let me spend my money so you don't waste yours by hitting that subscribe button.